In this tutorial, I will show you that in my environment, how I will configure redundancy for my internal gate library. What I'm trying to say here is, if you see my lab topology, all my internal servers are using Netscaler gateway, also Netscaler as a gateway. And which IP are they using? They're using the IP address of NS1, which is the management IP of Netscaler. As you can see in my topology, um, the only way to go out is via Netscaler. So my all my internal servers, including my domain controller, is using uh, a management IP of Netscaler 1 as default gateway. All right. I'll be in trouble if something happens to Netscaler 1, although external user will still work because that I have NS2, which is configured as highly available configuration. But as we know, the Netscaler IP, which is a management IP, is unique for both devices. Subnet IP, SNPs, or virtual IP WIPs will be replicated, and they will all, they both have both devices have same IP addresses. But Netscaler IP address is unique. So my external client, sorry, my internal servers won't be able to communicate or access the internet. Let me just show you what I'm trying to say here. This is my domain control. Right now I'm pinging the external IP address and if I show you the IP configuration, the default gateway is 10.10.10.200 which is the Netscaler IP of NS1. And if I take you to the browser, and this is the 10.10.10.200, which is NS1. As you can see, there are subnets IP and all, and virtual IPs. But 10.10.10.200 is the Netscaler IP. And if I go to secondary node, which is 10.10.10.201, it has 10.10.10.201 as Netscaler IP. And the rest of the IPs are the same because they will be same because secondary takes configurations from primary. So is there any way that I can configure sort of a virtual IP and use that as a gateway on my internal clients? So it doesn't matter if the primary fails and secondary becomes active, my internal servers can still access the internet. Yeah. For that purpose, what we like to do, that's what we like to test here. So I switch back to my primary and Let's say we will use an IP of 220, if it's not used, I think so. So I would say add an IP address 10, 10, 10, 220. And because it's a single IP and I will define it as a virtual IP address. Okay. And I don't want to manage using this IP address. Okay. And rest I will keep it default. So 10, 10, 10. Oh, sorry, not 200, I think. Uh, 220. 200 is already being used. Sorry about that. 220. And create. An IP of 10, 10, 10, 220 has been created. It will take a while for these changes to be replicated and comes to secondary but it will come eventually okay so now i have created a sub virtual ip 10 10 10 220 right and i would like to use this virtual ip to be used as gateway so Let's wait a while until it's... Oh, okay. 
it's here already. 10, 10, 10, 2, 20. Awesome. So, what we can do now, let's go to the server, which I'm already in. And try to change the default gateway instead of 200 or 201, which are the net scalers IPs. We will use a virtual IP, which can be load balanced between these two. Uh, let's say 10, 10, 10, 220, which, has, which we have created. So, to okay, and after using 220, I can still ping. It means that IP address is still working, I can still go outside, but although it's still active on NetScaler 1 or NS1, right? So let's Let me save the configuration here, so we don't lose it, and yeah, configuration save, the secondary should be saved automatically, yeah, nothing changed, awesome. So what I would like to do here, I would like to shut down or turn off. 10, 10, 10, 200, and see what happens. So if I go here, and to keep pinging is just to show you, 200 minus D, this is the net scalar IP of NS1, and right now my, D, my IP configs are 220, which is the virtual IP. Yeah, my gateway is the virtual IP. Right. So I will go and turn off NS2. So if I go, sorry, I will go and turn off NS1. So power off. Boom. And you see? I can still access the internet. I cannot reach 10, 10, 10, 200 anymore because that's down. But my internet is still working. I can still access the external network. And the reason is my gateway is 10, 10, 10, 220, which is the virtual IP. So if I go here, which is 10, 10, 10, 200, which is supposed to be down, and it is down, as you can see, it can't connect. And I am in 210 right now, which is, should be active at the moment. And here you go, primary. You see? 10, 10, 10, 200 is unknown, down. And 10, 10, 10, 201 is the primary. And if we go for network and IPs, 10, 10, 10, 2, 0 is one of the virtual IP which is used by my server as a gateway and I can still access the external network while NS1 is still down. So, this is the way that you can configure high availability for your internal default gateway if you are using Netscaler as default gateway. Most likely in your production environment you will be using your core switch as default gateway and core switch will already be redundant. Right? Uh, however, if you have an environment like me or a small size or medium size environment or a lab environment like me or whatever where you had to use NetScaler as in NetScaler as a default gateway, you can use this technique to make your gateway highly available. If you have two NetScaler and you are using them in highly available configuration, 
All right, so let me start NS1 again. Power on. It will take a while for to come. Right now it's still down. It won't affect anything in my case. Right now it's still booting. Once again, in real production environment, that might not be the case that you are using that scalar as a default gateway. But this technique can also be used in DMZ environment, where your servers are using NetScaler, let's say, as default gateway. And you have highly available configuration for NetScaler. Then you can configure a virtual IP, and that virtual IP can be used as default gateway. So it depends what you want to do. As you can see now, I'm getting reply back from NS1, because NS1 is up. Mm. I will see now. I'll go to go back to my 201, which is NS2, and go to highly available. And yeah, both are up. I would like to force fail over and fail over successful. Let's see. 10, 10, 10, 200 became primary again. I just lost one thing, and that's a lab environment. You may lose just one. Imagine. I just lost one thing. And it's a lab environment. It's a slower environment. So, if you have a production environment with good resources, I mean, one thing usually doesn't matter, but it's still quite good, you see. So, if I go to 200, now, NS root, NS root, and don't forget to change default password, okay? I've told you, it's a lab environment, I'm using default password, but you should change it. Um, hmm. okay. So let's scale on high availability, NS1 is primary. Awesome. So this is it, guys. That's how we tested, configure internal gateway redundancy. All. Oh, I can even remove the word internal and say gateway redundancy because this technique can be used in DMZ environment as well. Right. So this is it, guys. Thank you so much for your time and take it easy. Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.